Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at bidirectional forwarding. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's go through some of the theories of uh, bidirectional forwarding. Uh, detection protocol, it's a network layer protocol that uh, detects a failure at um, in the forwarding path. And uh, when it comes to uh, its support for the media, it supports almost all kind of medias. Um, and encapsulation, whether it's Ethernet, PPP, ATM, uh, etc. And the other benefit is that the detection at is a uniform rate uh, and much faster. You can define milliseconds uh, for for it to uh, detect a failure um, instead of using, for example, um, hello and dead interval of OSPF and similarly hello of ISIS or BGP. And it provides a low overhead um, method of detecting failure in the forwarding path basically between normally is configured between the two routers on a link. In terms of prerequisite, uh, Ceph and IP routing should be enabled uh, on all the participating routers um, for BFD. And one of the routing protocol, of course, uh, should be enabled uh, that we're going to enable for BFD uh, on the routers. Quick look at the topology. We have R1 and that is announcing uh, 8888 and that prefix will be used for the purpose of testing. Next we have R2, R3, R4 and R7. All routers are configured in OSPF area 0 and the cost is same across all links. We're going to use R3 as our testing router and we're going to reach the prefix 8888. Our primary path is yellow path that is going via 2 because it is shortest path. Our secondary path is via R4, R7, R2 and then finally to R1 to reach 8888. R3 is going to use the secondary path when the link between R3 and R2 fails. However, the link between R3 and R2 is not direct. There is a switch between the two routers. And when either end of the link goes down, the status on the other side still remains up. So it is not a point to point link. Okay, now let's run a quick test to see hypothetically what could happen if this was to go down right in the middle of the day on your live network. We On R3, we're going to run a ping to 8888 with a large count and then we're going to go on R2 and shut the interface towards R3, which is indirect. But let's, before we do that, let me bring on stopwatch and start the timer before I shut down the interface. And now let's shut the interface. Oh, we have lost the connectivity to 888. Nine seconds have passed. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. By this time, all our voice calls have disconnected and some of the very keen internet users in the office have realized that they have no internet and they start to pick up phones and trying to call their manager. But the phones aren't working, of course, they're IP phones. And 34 seconds past 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40. And magically we've got reachability again after 40 seconds. Amazing. Now we want to investigate the problem. What happened? So R3 is our core router of the site. Uh, so we're going to log into R3 and try and investigate um, to look at a route that we we're trying to reach 8888. And uh, Let's do show IP route 8888 and see how we're learning that. Okay, we see that we're learning via OSPF and it is coming from Ethernet 01 and the next stop is 404042. Ethernet 01 is, is the interface towards R4 and 404042 is the next stop of interface towards 
R4 and we received from 4444. Let's take a look at OSPF adjacencies on R3. Uh, we see that we have only one adjacency with only R4 on R3. And that's understandable because our interface on R2 to R3 has gone down and we have no OSPF path towards R2. So let's uh, enable the interface on R2 um, to investigate as to why it took so long to take the backup path. So we're going to go on R2, enable the um, interface and we verify on R3 that OSPF adjacency towards R2 is back. To investigate why R3 took so long to converge, we're just going to go again and shut down the interface on R2 towards R3 and come back on R3 and have a look at the OSPF adjacencies. We quickly realize that the uh, dead timer on the R3 towards R2 is counting down below 29. That means that the no hello packet has received from R2. And if we miss the four consecutive uh, hello packets, the adjacency is going to go down. So 10 times 4 is 40. That was the 40 second delay that happened when the originally the link went down. While you are in the middle of investigation, you received a very pleasant call from your boss and he wants to discuss why the failover didn't work smoothly. And he wants to know the backup links that he's been paying for, why they not been working properly. So we, while we're waiting for meeting, let's take a look what we can do to make our life easy so that these problems do not happen again. So in this case, we're going to use BFD between R2 and R3. So basically, BFD is going to use a faster convergence, a faster timer to let the upper layer protocol, in this case OSPF, know that the link has gone down. And don't wait, please, for, for 40 seconds um, to, to tear down the adjacency. Do it now and OSPF is going to tear down the adjacency and convergence is going to be quicker towards the backup path. So let's jump on to the routers to do look at the config. To configure BFD in Cisco IOS, first of all, we're going to go under the routing process of OSPF and enable the command BFD all interfaces. For the remaining BFD config, we're going to go under the interface ETH00, that's interface towards R2, and going to configure the transmit and receive intervals between the BFD packets and specify the number of consecutive control packets that must be missed before BFD declares that a peer is unavailable, which is 3 in this case. Next, jump on to R2 and configure BFD on the interface ETH02, the interface towards R3 from R2. Again, similarly, we're going to go into the routing process of OSPF1 and enable BFD all interfaces. Then under the interface ETH02, we're going to configure the BFD interval and the multiplier. To verify the BFD neighbors, show BFD neighbors. And we can see that on R2, we have our neighbor, which is 2020.2, 20, which is the next top IP address on the connected interface towards R3, and state is op. Now that the BFD is configured, let's go to R3 and run the ping to 8888, and then move over to R2 and shut down the interface towards R3 and see how long it takes now to converge. We're going to run the ping. We're going to first start over timer. 
and shut down the interface. Ah, we've got the connectivity back. Assume that I think I've run the timer a little bit earlier before I shut down the interface. So let's assume that we got the connectivity back this time within five seconds. That is a significant difference from what happened last time where there was no convergence until 40 seconds. Let's verify the prefix 888 on R3. We find that we're learning 888 slash 32 from interface E01. And that is the connected interface towards R4 from R3. And finally, due to the magic of PFT, this time convergence was quick. We had happy customers, happy boss, and no issues. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh,